for me to go back and rediscover Ultima 1 all over again because at the time I don't really remember it being quite so completely balls out insane. I don't know, just when I was a kid this whole thing seemed to make a lot more sense. The setup is pretty stock. Everything's happy in the magical land of Cesari until the evil wizard Mondane uses his powers to create the gem of immortality so he can become invincible and naturally take over the world. Of course! You play as a mythical hero from Earth who is periodically called to adventure in Cesaria through shimmering interdimensional moon gates. And really, I think the whole hero from a parallel Earth thing was only incorporated much later into the series retroactively when the games actually started having, you know, plots. I think it was just a token effort to try to connect the early primitive games to the overall storyline with mixed success. I mean, in Ultima 1, the story never really got much more complicated than Wizard Bad, you hero, go kill! It's basically the plot of every fantasy RPG ever, but hey, this was one of the first, and nobody was really expecting grand operatic storylines. I'm not kidding when I say back then, it wasn't really possible to include a story in most games. You couldn't fit one on the disc. I'm talking about games that were shipped on five and a quarter inch floppies with capacities upward of 360 kilobytes. I remember thinking it was a huge innovation in gaming when TSR released its Goldbox RPGs and saved a ton of disk space by printing all of its plot entries in a book included with the game. Whenever you progress in the story, the game would just refer you to an index number so you could read what was happening in the paperback book. The graphics were about as primitive as they get. They were just stick figures and wireframe dungeons. I remember playing this in my elementary school computer lab on monochrome Apple IIs. Now that took some imagination. So anyway, to start, all you have to do is run around, talk to the various kings who give you quests, go kill whatever they say, level up, and collect money. And you need money to afford necessities like food, weapons, armor, rocket fuel, and your flying car! Yeah, they sell rafts, horses, carts, and flying cars! Wait, a shuttle? They sell space shuttles. Yeah, I'll get back to that. But man, there's a store in this kingdom that sells space shuttles. You think your job is hard? How long do you think you've got to apprentice as a village blacksmith in this world before you can build space shuttles? Why that goes, this is hard work, and I've still got so much more work to do. I've got to shoe Farmer Wiggins' horse, fix his plow, and replace the two cracked eight shielding tiles on the Challenger. Well, I mean, just as soon as I finish replacing the negative power coupling on the repulsor lift drive, better get to it then. Man, that would have made Lord of the Rings a really short movie. You thought the giant eagle thing was a plot hole, what if they could buy a flying car or a space shuttle? This game is cracktastic. I'm sorry, I just cannot get over this. There are guys who sell space shuttles in this game. Fuck your epic mounts. This game has you cruising in jet-powered flying cars. And that's just for starters. One might think the game would just be over at this point, because I don't know about you, but I saw myself just cruising the land, running over the hapless orcs and knights roaming the land. It'd be really funny to watch, but... For some insane reason, the game doesn't let you do that. Sadly, weapons technology in Cesaria lags far behind their jet car advancements. I mean, the best thing you can hope to buy in most stores is a bow and arrow, which is kind of weird. Or is it? Actually, there are better weapons, and once you start sailing around, you'll find a place pretty quick where there's an island with a signpost. Search that area, and you'll find a weapon one level better than the one you already have. Go to another nearby signpost to increase your wisdom, and you reset the other signpost so you can search it again and get another weapon. Keep doing this and you'll get progressively better stuff. Although, some of the things you get, I still have no idea what they do. I mean, a triangle? What the fuck is that supposed to- who gives a shit about a triangle? A minute, what's this? It appears to be a sign written in some sort of... Elvish! But wait! What's this? There's something hidden here. Why, it's a weapon! And look! Here's another one! A 
much more potent weapons than the ones I was wielding before. Why, there's weapons strewn about all over the place. Like this. Some kind of futuristic power gauntlet. Wait. Something more. What could this be? A fucking triangle? What the hell am I supposed to do with a triangle? Wait! Here's something I can really use! But if you keep going back and forth and keep looking, eventually you'll find a phaser, or rather a phasor, and finally a blaster. I think this is the same world as your Hunter from the Future, where we just keep discovering advanced technology from Earth's past future. Doesn't that seem weird to you? I mean, here you are in the middle of a sword and sorcery kill the evil wizard quest, and suddenly you just trip over a blaster rifle kind of unbalanced technology really skews the campaign setting, don't you think? Oh, you want me to kill another Balrog? No problem! I'm loaded like a fucking space marine right now! Servant of the Secret Fire, wielder of the Flame of Arnor, Dark Fire will not avail you, Flame of Uldun! Out the flame of honor. Enjoy the fireworks. Actually, I joke, but it turns out you'll need the guns because the monsters here are badass. Like the fucking Loch Ness Monster and a Dragon Turtle. Holy crap, that's actually really scary. It's like fighting Gamera. Suddenly I need bigger guns. Where's the rocket launchers? You'll discover there's no way to kill the evil wizard Mondane even if you do have phasers because, since he has the Gem of Immortality, he's indestructible. The only way to do it is to go back in time and terminate him before he constructs the gem. How do you go back in time? Well, you find a time machine, of course. And how do you find a time machine? Well, you've got to go rescue a princess because they know where to find one. I just find it funny that Lord British, the ultimate kindly king in every Ultima game, has a princess locked in his dungeon. But you just hold on there, partner. A princess isn't going to give up the goods to just any schmuck who breaks her out of a dungeon. You gotta become a space ace first. Why? Well, because as we all know, it doesn't really matter how nice a guy you are, all chicks care about is how big your rocket is. So, how do you become a space ace? Well, obviously you have to go into space. And to do that, you have to buy a space shuttle. You see? You see how it all ties together? All you gotta do is go to the Starship dealership in town and give the guy there a sack of gold. I'm sorry, I don't mean to dwell on this, I just have so many questions about a society where you can buy space shuttles with gold coins, and why, if laser cannons and personal flying vehicles are commercially available, is Lord British so worried about a fucking gelatinous cube? What the fuck am I doing? I don't know how to fly a space shuttle. I barely know how to drive a car. Well, does it come with an instruction manual? How much does that cost? Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel! Load it with the worst! Well, whatever you do, be sure to buy extra rocket fuel, because you'll only be able to refuel at the space station? Huh? Who built the space station? Be sure you're wearing a vacuum suit, or you die of explosive decompression instantly after launching, and don't run out of gas, or you can't return to Earth. From there, you commandeer a starfighter, go into hyperspace, and Jesus fish, it's TIE FIGHTERS! <laughs> TIE FIGHTERS?! What the fuck is going on?! No wonder Mundane's so powerful, he's allied with the fucking Emperor! Oh, that's it. No way am I gonna deal with orcs and stormtroopers in the same night. 
right now I feel like I could take on the whole empire myself. Get you some! What you got is what we need and all we do is dirty deeds. We're the Space Balls! Watch out! We're the Space Balls! We're the masters of space. Hey, don't mess around. We're the Space Balls! Richard Garriott's tabletop Dungeons & Dragons game must have been just about the most glorious thing in human history. This game takes D&D, Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, among many other things, throws them in a blender and just hits the puree switch, and my god is it beautiful. This guy is a god of nerds. So anyway, once you kill 20 TIE Fighters, you become a Space Ace. Now you have to rescue a princess, but that's a lot easier since every castle has one locked in its dungeon. Apparently all the kings of Cesaria are kidnapping assholes. Only problem is you need a key, but that's not really a big problem because every fucking step you take, Chuckles the fucking jester shouts, I have the key! So you have to stab Chuckles in cold blood, which I'll admit is immensely satisfying, take the key and hack your way out of there with the princess in tow. She tells you there's a time machine parked around back of the castle, so you get in, you go back to the past, beat the shit out of Mondane, and smash his magic gem. This guy is a complete pussy, too. After a few rounds, he just turns into a bat and starts running away from you. I guess I understand. Would you be ready for battle if some guy just busted into your lab in his fucking TARDIS, kicked the door open, and came out shooting with a blaster rifle? I'd be toast, man. Not even sure I'd have pants on. Sadly, there's no option to take the gem and assume Mondane's Dark Throne, but hey, you've got a time machine and all the hot princess poontang you could ever want. Still, seems like we're forgetting something. Mm, always two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. But which was destroyed? The master or the apprentice? <laughs> <laughs>